Hi everyone, it's Carol here at Oak House Journals. Big one welcome as always from me. And I'm going to be doing a guest check number 30 in the 50 stack challenge, which is being hosted by Amy. And as always, information on the challenge is in the description box below the video, as well as all the items that I use to alter my guest check. So as I say, I'm going to be doing prompt number 30 and the prompt for this one is ink. So I have here a piece of Canson mixed media paper that I've cut to size or I've cut to the size of my guest check as you can see and this paper you've seen me use it before is 200 gsm or 120 pounds in weight and it says extra white or bright white down here okay so I'm going to be working on that I've also got a Tim Holtz layering stencil here and this one is called rays so I'm going to be using that on my piece like that I think I might turn it round and use it the other way I think I'll use it the other way and have it like that I've got some Ranger Distress texture paste and this is the opaque and I really like this it's very creamy almost like a, a mousse and I have a palette knife so I've got some washi tape here and I'm just going to anchor my stencil down onto my glass mat here and that will just make life a little bit easier for me as I'm trying to work with the texture paste. I don't have to worry about it getting underneath or moving. It's not necessary. You can do, you can hold the stencil um, down with your fingers if you like, but I actually think that um, this gives you just that little bit more um, flexibility. And as you can see, that's what the texture paste looks like. It's nice and um, creamy, it really is. I'm just going to give a little bit of extra weight onto my stencil and then I'm just going to gently work my texture paste down and over my piece. Now initially I'm going to go in quite heavy with my texture paste but then I'm going to smooth it out and thin it out. Now I'm very gently going to release my stencil from the washi and there we go that's my piece covered with the texture paste. I'm just going to run my fingers down the edge here just to get rid of the excess and similarly down there and there and now I'm just going to set this off to one side to dry and then I'll come back and start playing with my my inks. This is what my guest check looks like now that it's it's dry and I really love this stencil. Um, I wasn't sure about it when I first bought it because I thought it was a little bit boring but I love how it's got this distressed look um, to all the little uh, rays going out from this center portion here. So um, before I go in and start painting this, I have actually trimmed it down a little bit more so that it is slightly smaller than my guest check. There's probably about three mil um, all the way around um, making this smaller. And the reason I've done that is because I'm thinking that when I've painted this or used my inks, as, as you can see, I've got a, a small selection out here. I'm thinking that I might actually back this again with something so that it stands out. I am thinking about doing something in this area here. I'm not quite sure what at the moment, whether it's gonna be a label or um, I don't know, maybe something like a heart. Possibly, I don't know. Um, so what have I got? I've got a selection of inks here. I've got Stormy Sky and Bundles Sage because I'm on a bit of a roll at the moment working in this pale blue, pale green scenario and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I've lifted out some Hickory Smoke Distress Ink. I have had a little bit of a play with my colours. I do have, which I'm sure everybody else has, um, a swatch 
book of all the um, ink pads and when I buy an ink pad then I do one of these little swatch cards so I know exactly what colour I'm going to be working with but even working with these sometimes I mean this one's stormy sky here um, I mean that to me looks deeper and a darker blue on the lid than it does when you actually go to use it or emboss it so I like looking at these cards but I also like having a little bit of play with the inks or and or paints um, on a piece of the card that I'm actually going to be working on because again that can be different so this is just a scrap piece of this um, same mixed media paper and I've just been having a little bit of of a play to see how well my colours went together and they look gorgeous so <laughs> fingers crossed I can get this to to work as well but this won't be wasted I'm thinking I will probably use it for doing whatever embellishment I decide to do down down here so how am I going to use my inks well all I'm going to do is the usual technique is just put a, a, a smudge um, of my inks on my Tim Holtz glass mat. Um, I'm hesitating as I'm speaking here because I'm not quite sure which colour to go in with first. I think I might go in with the hickory smoke um, and obviously I've put the blue down there. Um, so let's just go in with that first and I can always come back to the bundled sage and um, the stormy sky in a moment or two. So what I've got here is I've got a, a spray bottle just with some water in and I'm just going to very lightly spray my card. Um, I've got some water off to one side here for cleaning my brush and I'm just going to put some water onto my glass mat here and I'm just very gently going to start playing and letting my inks run down and what I'm doing here is I'm just going down where I've actually layered my um, texture paste so I'm just going to I just want this all very very light at the moment um, I can always go in with more color later on but for now I just want to go in with just a little bit of color and it's not really running much, it's the texture paste is almost absorbing the liquid that I'm putting down. So I need to obviously carry a bit more liquid on my brush and then just touch it. Yeah, that works better actually. So there's going to be a lot of um, hyperlapse camera work going on because this is going to take ages to do because I'm just going to build up my colours and layers as I go on this and just have a little bit of fun playing. So I'll keep popping back with the camera um, paused just so that you can see how things are going and fingers crossed I'll be able to do what I want to do. So I will see you in a little while everybody. So I'm liking how that is looking at the moment. Um, I still want to build up more colour on here. So I'm now going to go in and just give it a quick blast with my heat gun before I go back in and add some more colours on it or some more depth of colour on it, I should say. Let me just move my water to one side. I'm going to be electrocuting myself otherwise. This is how my piece looks now that I have um, done all three colours and um, yeah, it's come out a lot grungier than I wanted it to by uh, by far. Um, I'm liking the effect, but it's way too grungy for what I had in mind. So what I've done is I've gone back in, I've cut myself another piece of the mixed media paper and I've worked with the stencil again to put some more texture paste on there. And I'm not sure if you can pick up the colour. I've actually started with the green and this is one layer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on building up my layers again and see if I can get a much lighter more delicate look which is um, what I fancied rather than this grungy look so let's see how I get on this time 
So I've done um, several layers of the green and now I'm just going in with the blue and I'm finding the best way to do this is just to use my water to let it run down by the side of my texture paste and then when I think I've got a track then just go in with a little bit of the colour and let it follow the same track and just kind of keep my eye on it as it runs down here because I don't want it puddling too much in my green. I don't mind it mixing in and I'm finding that that's actually the best way for me to, to do it. So I'm just going to have another go at this one to one side here. And if it doesn't want to move and this paper really does hold on to the, the liquid, I'm just creating an initial track with my paintbrush and blending it backwards and forwards. Now I think I've got enough going there, enough of a track going, so I'm going to just add some colour in there. Not too much because I just want to keep it very, very light. And as you can see, I'm just letting it play backwards and forwards. There's a little bit of a, a crevice in the texture paste there, so I'm letting it flow into that. And letting it come down to the bottom here. And just dabbing it off and just going in with my tissue just to pick up any excess water. So I'm just going to carry on doing that for the last few. There we go. And I'm really liking how that's that's looking. These ones up here are pretty dry, so I'm just going to go in and have a little play with these again. Just to build up a bit more colour if I can. What I'm trying to do is just keep a check on it as it runs down and if I think it's going too far in the wrong direction then I just use my tissue and mop up the excess. Okay so I'm going to give this a little dry now. I'm hoping you can pick up the colours. My paper is pretty wet now but um, I'm just going to give it a quick blast with my heat gun and uh, set this colour before I go in with my next one. So this is how my piece looks now that it's dry and I'm liking how I've got some of the blue running down into the green down here um, and it's almost activating some of the yellows in the green so I'm really liking how that's that's looking now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the hickory smoke and obviously that's going to darken it down quite a bit but I'm hoping I can pick up some of these really really delicate little pieces of uh, texture paste so let's see how I get on with that And this time I'm going to be just painting over the top of the texture paste and not onto the cardstock itself. So I've got quite a, a bit of water here um, on the hickory smoke because I actually like the purple effect that I can pick up and get with hickory smoke if it's quite wet. So I'm just wetting down my texture paste and just going in trying to be very very light of hand with with this now because I haven't really got much room to be able to um, dab this off and I certainly don't want it to to run too much so I just want a hint of colour on this texture paste so I'm just very gently trying to do to do that and I'm actually using my brush this time to blot it off. So that's looking quite nice. So let's go in and try the next one. I think the secret on here is definitely not too much water. 
so that it doesn't run off onto the cardstock but I do want to get some water on there so let's pick up a little bit of colour let me dab it on and let it play So this is what the piece looks like now that I've gone in with a couple of layers of the hickory smoke and to get this sort of effect down here what I've done is I just went in with a little bit of the hickory smoke on a wet paintbrush and just drizzled it down the texture paste and then dried it off before I moved on to the next one. So I was actually getting little puddles of the hickory smoke mixed in with the water on my texture paste. And as it dried, it shrunk and it's actually left this marking. And I'm really pleased with how it's come out. Um, I went in with a little bit of extra green just to pull the green further towards the outside edges of the uh, of the card before it was fairly localized round here but i just wanted it to blend in a little bit better so i'm going to go round this now with some stormy sky just to frame the edge a little bit i'm only just putting a, a hint of the stormy sky on the edge so that's that for now um, and what I thought I would do next is to create something for in this area. I just made myself a little rough template out of paper and using this piece of cardstock which you saw earlier on where I was um, testing out the colours, I've just chopped out a portion and uh, I've got a little tiny heart here and what I thought I would do with this is go over the top with some of the Ranger crackle paste in clear rock candy I think it's called um, and then I cut another of the hearts out but this time marginally bigger than this one and for that I just used a little scrap of um, again the mixed media cardstock that I had lying around just a little bit like this um, and I used this to mop up some of the blue ink from earlier on. What I thought I'd do whilst that crackle paste is drying is um, I thought I would go in and just add a little bit of um, foiling on to my um, background here. So I've got some of these Pebo silver finish sheets and whilst I have got some of the Pebo glue that you should use with these sheets, I really don't find this works at all well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it out with my art glitter glue and see how well I get on with that. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to run a little, little bit of glue down the texture paste in various parts and I'm only going to work one ray at a time. Um, I find I can get a better finish doing it that way so I'm just going to pop my piece of foil over the top and just encourage it to adhere to my glue just gently stroking down my foil where the glue is. Okay, and let's see how that's worked. And there we go, we just have a little bit coming out on my texture paste. Not much, but just a hint of it in places. So I'm gonna carry on doing that. And there we go everybody, that's all the rays gilded with the silver and I'm really liking how that looks. Probably gone a little bit over the top with it but um, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and as you can see I went in with the heat gun because I actually found that if I dried the art glitter glue so that it became tacky 
but not absolutely dry, then the gilding sheet would actually adhere quicker to the background. So I'm going to set this aside and see how we've got on with the crackle glaze and see whether that's dry yet. So my crackle glaze wasn't quite dry but I gave it a blast with my heat gun and I've got some very very fine crazing going on here on my, um, my little heart so I'm quite pleased with how that looks. I think you can probably just pick it up in the camera but as always I'll do photographs um, and pop them at the end of the video for you to have a better look. So I was thinking of having that piece on there and as you know I cut out this other heart and I edged them both with the hickory smoke just by rolling them on the edge of the ink pad. Nothing, uh, nothing special about that. So I was thinking of actually having them maybe something like this just layered up on here but actually I'm not really liking the look as much as I thought I would so I'm going to ignore this heart and like everything else you'll probably see it pop up in another one of the prompts because what you are going to see is another piece of that background. Um, I think I did three for prompt number 27 so anyway I've chopped off a, a piece that is the size um, or sorry, slightly larger than the size of my guest check. And I'm going to glue this onto my guest check. And if you remember, I cut this down so that it was slightly, just slightly smaller than the size of my guest check. Well, I'm going to trim this down a little bit more because I'm absolutely loving this against this background. So I want more of this background to show on my guest check. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop some glue on my guest check, um, glue down this portion here. Okay, so that's nicely, nicely glued on there. And as you can see, if I put that on, you do get a hint of the green behind, but I think I just want a little bit more to show. And I happen to know that you can cut through this texture paste quite, quite happily. So I'm just going to trim off a portion there. I'm just kind of eyeballing this really. I just know I just want a little bit showing and I'm going to take a little bit more off the bottom. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. Yep, yeah, I love that. I think that'll work really well. And I actually think I could probably stitch through this um, texture paste, but um, I'm not going to give it a try. I'm going to leave it as it is and just glue this onto my background now. I inked this before, so I'm just redoing the inking. Pop that off to one side. And it keeps on wanting to bend this card. So again, I'm going to go in with my art glitter glue and glue this onto the background. So now I thought I would just have my little heart just slightly off the edge of my guest check, something like that. So I'm going to go in with, a, again, some more art glitter glue. I'm just going to have that something like that and then what I thought I would do would be to use one of these Tim Holtz chit chat ideology stickers and the one I want is just down here and it's the word us and again I'm just going to touch the edge of it and it is a sticker but I am going to put a little bit of glue on the back just to help it on its way and I'm just going to pop that in the middle there. I could have used a little foam pad to dimensionalize it but I'm quite happy with with that. So there we go everybody that's my finished altered guest check and as you saw I used distress ink to almost painting it on to my mixed media paper and also onto my textured paste to give my colouring to this piece. And I colour the heart, um, edged it with ink and edged the, the main piece with ink. And the background piece, this piece, 
that was done with ink, a mixture of Distress Oxide sprayed ink and also bundled sage out of uh, an ink pad. I'm really happy with how this one has, has come out. Um, it's not grungy, it's just very, very simple and um, quite delicate. So yeah, I'm pleased with this one and I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching. And as I say, I'll leave some pictures at the end for you to have a closer look. Until the next video, take care everybody. Bye bye now.